Hey there, what's up? Welcome to this Spotfire tutorial brought to you by DataFuel. My name is Kyle Amata, and today I'll show you another way to perform calculations between columns in a cross table. If you haven't seen the previous video on this topic, be sure to check it out because this one picks up where that one left off. In that video, I showed how to add calculated columns and then use a custom expression to subtract those two columns in the cross table. In this video, we're going to add some flexibility with property controls, which will let you dynamically change the values in the custom expression of the calculated column instead of going in and manually editing that expression each time you want to change the value. To quickly review how we built this cross table, let's go back to the original data. This table has a column with the average three month initial production from a group of oil wells in Texas, and each one has a specific completion type. As a side note, I've added completion types three and four to this data set, which the last example did not have. And then we added two calculated columns to show the average IP rate for the first two completion types. The problem though is that these calculations are now inflexible. And that might be fine if you're never going to change them, but if you'd like to be able to quickly change the values in the cross table, for example, subtract type three from type four, you'd have to go into the calculated column and then edit the custom expression for each of those calculated columns, which can be time consuming and not very user friendly. To solve this problem, we'll add two drop down property controls to this page, and then each drop down will have a list of all of the completion types. We will then pass that completion type as a document property into the custom expression of the calculated columns. Then the user will be able to change the drop down and see the cross table update dynamically. There are three steps to do this. First, insert a new text area and then edit that text area. In the second step, we'll add the property controls. Click this property control icon from the toolbar and then select drop down list. Click new to add a new document property and then give it a name and a data type. Since we'll be using text in this property, the data type is going to be string. Click OK, and now we're going to define which values to display in the dropdown. Choose fixed values, and then enter the four different completion types into the value column of this table. In this example, we have completion type 1, completion type 2, completion type 3, and completion type 4. Make sure these values are spelled exactly the same way they are in your data table, otherwise you'll get an error. Now give these values friendly names that will appear in the dropdown. You can type whatever you want here, and I'm going to go with type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. After that, click OK, save and close the text area editor, and now we can see this dropdown with the four values that we just defined. Because this cross table has two columns, we need to add a second property control for that other column. We can go back and edit the text area, and then copy and paste the existing control that we just created. You can do this by right clicking on the existing property control, copying it, and then pasting it, and then right clicking on the new control to edit it. Now we'll create a new document property, and as long as you're editing the copied control, it should automatically populate these values, so we'll just click OK. Finally, add some text next to these dropdowns to explain what the controls do. and then save and close the text area. The third and final step is to tie these property controls to our cross table by passing the value from the dropdown into the calculated columns. To do that, we'll need to modify the expression in each calculated column. Click Edit, Column Properties, scroll down and then select the three month average IP dash completion type one column and click the Edit button to change this expression. If you didn't watch the last video on this topic and are not familiar with these expressions, just check out that second video that I published regarding cross tables and you'll learn a little bit more about why I use this particular expression. The way it's written now, this expression is only going to show the three month average IP if completion type is equal to one. Replace the hard coded value of completion type one in the if statement with the first document property that we created. You can find that document property in the list of properties in the middle part of this custom expression editor select it, and then click insert to add it to the expression. Click OK, and then rename this column to reflect the change. Now we can edit the other calculated column with the second document property just like before. Rename this column, and then click OK to close the column properties.
Now we can test it out and make sure everything is working correctly by selecting different values from the dropdowns. Notice how the cross tables updates automatically. This is because the value in the dropdown is passed to the if statement of the calculated column, and this cross table is using those two calculated columns with the properties. And the third column in the cross table is just taking the difference between those two calculated columns. In this video, I showed another way to perform mathematical operations within a cross table using the combination of calculated columns, document properties, and custom expressions. I hope you've learned a few new tricks about cross table calculations from these last three videos. Don't forget to visit the blog post linked in the notes below to download this Spotfire file and subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you're alerted when new videos are published. Thanks for watching and have a great day.